Hello and welcome everybody out there in YouTube, I guess. Not yep. the normal place that we hang out, though. We've been on YouTube much more often lately, and it feels nice. It does. Uh, yes. Uh, I am hosting another tier ranking video. My name is Michael Hayes, and with me, as has happened before and will happen again, is Mr. Paul Brooks. Hello, Paul. Good day. Good day indeed. Man. Paul, a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. This is true, just real recently. Like three days ago or something, right? Probably four, five, six, somewhere in there. <laughs> it depends on when this gets posted, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, that has triggered a thing. You said, Mike, I love the Texas, Texas, is that how you pronounce it? Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Well, there's a, there's different ways to spell it and different ways to mm. say it. So, yeah. Okay. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You love the series. You said, please let me share with the world how I feel about every single element of it. Yeah, I guess so. I don't really, I'm not much of a gore, what do they call it? A gore hound or a gore whore? Sure. I'm not really, it's not really my thing necessarily, but for whatever reason, I've seen all nine of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, mm -hmm. so I'm like, well, let's do this thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a classic series. I mean, it, you can't deny that. Whether or True. not it's successful in every iteration is up to us to find out now, depending on how you feel about it. This is true. Oh, yeah. Well, I just want to start out by popping up just a classic image, just in case anyone's wondering... What we're talking about is this guy, Leatherface. Yeah, yeah. He, he's the villain in all of them? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, depending on how you look at it, yes. Okay, that's a good point. Sometimes pe some people feel he might be a victim in some things, right? Right. He is uh, a guy that isn't all there necessarily and in, in portrayed in some ways. And some people feel he's being exploited by a gross cannibalistic family. But he certainly likes to wear faces on his face. Yeah, you can't deny that, though. <laughs> you right. can't deny he likes faces on his face. And to get them, he does cut them off of a human. So Correct. You know. All right. Well, why don't we just fuck around? No, let's not fuck around anymore. Let's, let's get into let's this. Let's get right into this. Let's get into this. So if you're unfamiliar with how tier listing works is we have this grading scale from F all the way up to A. And a lot of the time there's an S tier, which, you know, I think unlike the U.S. is an international grade of, you know, excellence. But we have, for this instance, given it a chainsaw. So, Paul, you're going to need to rate all of these elements of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from either F to chainsaw. And I am. Uh, I'm really excited to do that. And for just a little treat for everybody, we're also mm -hmm. going to showcase... Uh, some Texas Chainsaw Babes. Absolutely. Usually in these films, the main victim is is a is a woman who is being hunted and chased and harassed and threatened with a chainsaw by Leatherface and the rest of the family. Yeah, so, it's a tried and true tradition. And I figured let's, uh, you know, recognize some of the iconic uh, ladies of the franchise. Mm hmm. And, and while we're doing that, I also have a little bit of surprise for you, Paul, that we're going to do a little bit of extra ranking as well um, mm. that we'll come to throughout the series of, of these rankings. So Okay, very cool. I guess let's get to it. Yeah, let's, let's start, get right into it. Let's start out with number one, 1974, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper. You've got it right there as a physical I got it. Blu -ray, I got it at I a garage sale. Oh, no, that's a two-DVD set, so not a Blu-ray. Yeah. Yeah, what? I got it at a garage sale for $2. Again, I am not like a gigantic Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. I don't like own all the Blu-rays or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I do have this one, and it's a pretty cool two-disc ultimate edition is what it says. Okay. See that? Yeah, yeah, I do see that. It's yeah. very nice. Well, Paul, um, this is where it gets down to it. Where, yeah. where and that okay so for the listener also the, the way a tier list works if you're unfamiliar is it's not just putting all of these elements in a single linear order you get to put if, if paul thinks every single thing here is the best thing ever all of them go on chainsaw tier that's how it goes but you right. know sometimes things aren't as good so you knock it down a tier or something so you can have it's more like a cloud of just where things kind of go 
And so, yeah. Paul, I mean, I hope you thought about this. Where where do you think this Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 classic goes? I did think about it, and I can tell you right now, you can just pop that bad boy right up to the chainsaw. Up to the chainsaw. All right. Well, look at yeah. this. We're going to have, we've got some really special technology that allows us to do this live on stream. Look at that right there. A little Texas Chainsaw guy right there. I mean, it shouldn't be su surprising to too many people. The original film is still the gold standard, not just for Texas Chainsaw movies, but for like a lot of horror movies in general. It's mm -hmm. it's the gold standard. It's uh, uh, one of the most iconic horror movies ever made for a reason, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a film that was scary when it came out. I think if you, in my opinion, if you watch it today, it is still scary. It is still iconic. It is, it is aged really like surprisingly well um, for a movie that came out close to 50 years ago at this point. Yeah, it has been that long, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, then, certainly allowed to forgive it some things. But we'll leave yes, my yeah. opinion out of this. <laughs> this is yeah, not I about know that me you ranking. Don't, you don't quite feel the same, and that's okay. Yeah, I, I respect it. Absolutely. What what my opinion is is respect. Um, I, anyway, so part two of this is we're going to look at the babe for this, which is, there she is. Sally, played by Marilyn Burns. The original uh, fatal femme. We'll say. Well, the original, the original, we're going to try not to get into too many spoilers here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really want to do that to people, but she is obviously very well known as one of the like original final girls is like the trope, you final know. Final girl, that's the phrase. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and sadly has passed away. So rest oh. in peace, Marilyn Burns. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, absolutely iconic horror babe. And uh, sh her performance in the original film is uh, really something to behold. So if for whatever reason you're watching this and you haven't seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you should probably go check it out. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, then, and we're going to do a little animation here. <laughs> Where do you think it should go? Where well, here's the does thing. Sally belong? I mean, Sally is, as I said, you know, one of the all-time great... Uh, women in in horror movies i think what i would like to do mike is i want to mm -hmm. rate the movies but in my opinion all of the women that we're talking about today are babes mm -hmm. they're awesome i think they need to go in the b category the b column for because they're all because babes. it's babes oh i yeah. see well okay well then <laughs> let's do a little magic here then paul and why don't we yeah. just why don't we just you know we're going to toss sally down there and so that there's no confusion we are going to adjust the B column. Okay. We are going to add... <laughs> we're going to add... I know what you're going to do. You Do Do you know what I'm going to do, Paul? I think you're probably going to type A-B-E-S. <laughs> it might be what happens. I'm just going to go ahead and type A-B-E-S. Yeah. Oh, and for some reason, that keyboard's not working, so we're going to go into this other keyboard. Wow, what movie, movie magic we've got. Look at that. And we've got that. And the beauty is we also have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre font, which ah, we yes. will then change it to and say, okay. And we'll just go ahead and, and shrink this mother effort down. Boom. And now we've got Babes. Only babes belong in B. So if a if a video does if a film does less than A, it's dropping to C instantly. This is officially I, the babes tier. I can't rate a Texas Chainsaw movie babes if I want to. Oh, as long as you knowingly rate it as babes, then I think that's okay. Okay. But, but we'll there see is, what happens. There is no B tier. It's babes tier. Okay. Okay. Well, let's follow this up, Paul, with the 1986 sequel. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, a very yeah. different film. This is this is absolutely true, and yeah, 1986. So it, the, what is that? Twelve years uh, from yes. the original to the sequel. Yeah, um, which is I think the longest space in between any of these films. Um, I don't exactly know why 
Toby Hooper, you know, took so long to do the sequel, but maybe he didn't want to do the sequel. Um, but he did. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like you said, this thing is very, very different from the original film. Very comedic in a lot of ways. It is absolutely a comedy horror. Yeah. It doesn't make um, any sense. Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's a wild combat comedic ride I, in my not important opinion for this video. Well, no, I, I absolutely agree with you, and, I, and I'll tell you right now, pop that bad boy into the chainsaw. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I really like, you know, my the, the, the mileage on the original for me is a little less than many people, but mm-hmm. I'll tell you, man, I weirdly like two a lot. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Have you done that for Bingo Night? Absolutely have, and we had a blast with it. It's got so many fun, weird squares because so much weird shit happens in that movie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, Dennis Hopper's in it. I mean, obviously, pretty much any time he is in a movie, you know that you're going to get something weird and fucked up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, he would have been a toilet troll. I just have to throw <laughs> that out there. If uh, if it weren't mm-hmm. for the great Roger Corman, you know, he, he might not have been in this movie. So thank you, Roger, for that. Thank you, uh, Dennis, for your performance in this film. Also, mm-hmm. rest in peace, of course. Of course. Uh you got um, uh, Bill Mosley in the film as well as Chop mm-hmm. Top, uh, and Caroline Williams, who is great as uh, Stretch. Oh, you mean this Caroline Williams? There she is. Wow. Yeah, she's a great, babe. Great performance. Total babe. Paul, where does she go? She's gonna go in B for Babes. She goes in B for Babes. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, I uh, had the opportunity to meet her a handful of years ago her and i are in a movie together randomly oh wow Um, yeah nice nice lady well very cool look forward to seeing the film as well paul yeah keep your eyes open for um cuddly toys a Uh film by kansas bowling coming out at some point sweet yeah well paul we now jump less than 12 years to 1990 where we get leatherface the texas chainsaw massacre 3 yes indeed where this says, what does it say? The saw is family. It says, on yeah, that's his kind of a like a iconic, you know, slogan from the uh, cha- the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, and I think mm-hmm. that it, it originated with this film right here. Okay, I think I could be wrong about well, that. Well, if if you if you know otherwise, people, uh, please tweet at President Joe Biden and let him know <laughs> that it is different. <laughs> Please do. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this is an interesting one. Um, I enjoyed it. You're going to hear, you. quite frankly, you're going to hear that a lot throughout the video here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ken Forey is in this film. You may, horror fans may recognize him from uh, the original Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Um, and he's back in this movie. And um, yeah, this one's interesting. I would say that this one kind of, goes back to the goes back to its roots a little bit more closer than certainly part two does mm-hmm. um, you also got Vigo Mortensen in the film from um, Lord of the Rings and lots of other stuff and he's he's interesting as well <laughs> and yeah it kind of like goes back to the house and kind of goes back to a more traditional Texas chainsaw film if you will mm-hmm. I guess. Um, and it's interesting. There's some interesting things in there, but I would probably say it's not quite a uh, classic on the same level of some of the other ones. Mm, okay. Um, but I did enjoy it. I think it's worth a watch. So I'm going to say, um, hmm. Yeah, you know what? Pop it into the uh, A column a? there. All right. Yeah, might as well. Pop this right into A. Beautiful. And it, not the last time you will hear uh, Leatherface in the title. <laughs> why, I wonder why. <laughs> well, Paul, that brings us to Michelle from the film, who is the yes. uh, played by Kate Hodge. Yeah, Kate Hodge. I'm going to be honest. It's been a while since I've seen this one, and I really don't remember too much about her character. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can see that she's kind of going through it right here. Not, not in a um, good situation. I don't. Unless, unless it is a good. I don't know. Anyway, 
She might be into it. We don't know. I don't know uh, what the context not. of this is. It does look like there's a bit of blood. And while I think it's usually a sign, not always, but usually a sign that someone's not happy with their situation. It's usually not a great sign. But yeah. I will tell you that uh, she is a babe and she belongs in that B All right. column right there for babe. Popping it up to the B. It's the yeah. famous song there for, for babes. Great right. job. I'm sure she did a great job in the film, though, you know? Oh, of course. Well, now here comes a oh, film boy. that's got a lot of pe- a lot of people in it, at least two that a lot of people know. 1994's yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Yeah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I watched this for the first time just a handful of days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and a friend of the show, Tim, watched this together. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I think this is probably most famous just simply for the fact that Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger are the stars of the film. One of those situations where you have two big stars who were like, you know, really early on in their career and they're doing a Texas Chainsaw movie. And Mm -hmm. uh, oh boy, this one is... Really bad. It's oh, really, no. really bad. <laughs> um, but I didn't have a bad time watching it. Um, okay. It's, it's, I don't quite know what to say. I mean, it's it's basically like uh, Renee Zellweger's character, along with some of her fr- friends, are, are at prom. Okay. And... They're doing something, and their car breaks down, and they end up at Leatherface's house. And um, Matthew McConaughey is part of the family mm. in this one, and it almost feels like they didn't have all the dialogue written in this one. It's very sort of loosey-goosey feeling. Hmm. Um, and Leatherface, as you can see from the poster here, does a lot of... Um, you know, he, he's very into cross-dressing, which is not a new thing that happens throughout the franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, but they really kind of lean into it, this one, where he's really into, like, you know, putting on his lipstick and that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, this one, again, worth a watch if you are going through these movies. I would say certainly check it out. It's on Netflix right now. Okay. So if you got the Netflix, you can you can... Or wait, no. I'm sorry. It's on HBO Max. Oh, okay. Yeah. They seem to have some of the chainsaw stuff for whatever reason. So you can check it out. But for me, I got to go see for Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fair. Not one of my faves. It's, it's you know, these things are going to happen. You're not yeah. going to, you're not going to have all the winners. Right. All the time. Apo- apologies to uh, Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. I hope you're not too uh, offended by it. We know they're watching. Speaking <laughs> of Ray Ray, I think that's what everyone calls her. Uh huh. Here she is, a little scared from prom. Yeah. 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 And, Looking uh, a little scared, but uh, I have to tell you, she's a babe in this, Mike. She's oh, an absolute babe. No doubt. Um, and I say that as someone who. Really has you know, Renee Zellweger's filmography has never really been at the top of my you know like to do list. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not all that. I mean, I've seen Jerry Maguire, obviously, who hasn't, but she's in this thing. And the thing that you know is there's kind of a trope in here where she's the nerd, right? Like, oh, she's oh. not attractive. She's she's wearing glasses. She's a nerd. Mm. But as as you go through the movie here, you know, the glasses come off or whatever and you're like oh she is a babe well yeah obviously yes, duh. um so yeah she's she she can definitely pop into that b for babes category All although right. i will tell you mike there's uh-huh. also some uh, other attractive uh, several other attractive ladies in this one as well so sure. if you're into the if you're into the texas chainsaw babes uh this actually would be a good one to watch very nice very nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Paul, real quick, I got two sidetracks, I want to say. Oh. First of all, just about Renee. I'm going to say also, you know, her filmography's not really been on my radar as well. Mm-hmm. But 
I weirdly really liked the film Nurse Betty when it came out. I, it, it was her, she was obsessed with a uh, soap opera and it was a whole weird thing. She played a person who was obsessed with a soap opera and travels to LA to do weird, crazy things and big fan of it. Uh, I had a poster hanging up in my bedroom <laughs> in what? college. Yes, I so did of nurse Betty. I weird thing. Anyway. Wow. The main track, speaking of, speaking of babes. I wanted to do a quick little uh, scoring here as well, Paul, where we can review um, sexy Leatherface costumes. Oh, and my. <laughs> I just thought it might be nice just to see, get that out of the babes thing there, what you think about each of these individual ones, and we can just rank them wherever they go. They don't have to go in the babes thing. This is no judgment on the models. This is just these sexy costumes and where you think they deserve to be hmm. in the rankings. Wow. Yeah. This is interesting. I, I was not aware that this was a thing at all. Oh yeah. Um, There's a sexy everything costume, <laughs> including so. leather face apparently. Yeah. Um, well, I, well, I would, you know, say that the first one uh -huh. with uh -huh. the, the girl who has some blood on her shirt there, this, this one here, yeah. Oh, you have these all like individually. Oh, okay. I can work with everything here. Yeah. I would say that that's probably to me the most authentic looking. Okay. So you can go ahead and pop that in the B. In the B tier? All right. Yeah, I, I would say if if you're looking to get dressed up as Leatherface for uh, for Halloween, that would be the, my top choice right there. Okay. Now, what about these other two? We got, we got this here, which looks, you know, less authentic. <laughs> Yeah, that sort of looks like a Tim Burton uh, Texas oh, yeah. Chainsaw oh, Massacre. Oh, where did that one go? That one went to space. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, kind of both of them do, really. Yeah, but I get what you're saying. The other one's got, like, the the the, the on the apron. That, oh, Jesus, what is happening? Uh, on the apron, <laughs> there's some, like, oh, seams that look like Corpse Brighty kind of thing to me. Yeah. But uh, but you know what? I mean, not not still not a bad look. I think mm -hmm. that you can basically pop both of those in the uh c section all right we'll pop those into c no pun intended oh yeah yeah and uh, c for chainsaw you know i mean it's not a bad thing no chainsaws are chainsaws they're dangerous be careful mm -hmm. all right well let's keep moving here after a little distraction and check out the ninth or 2003 remake of the original texas chainsaw massacre uh yes, here indeed Got that right here. Going to show that off real quick. Oh, very nice. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this was, I, I remember this being kind of a big deal when it came out because it was like, okay, Michael Bay's producing it, right? I think so. Um, Toby Hooper was involved in this one as well. Yeah, okay. Michael Bay produced it. Uh, and we'll say Kim Kim uh, Henkel, who I, I believe also um, wrote uh, co-wrote the original film. Mm -hmm. uh, was involved in this one. I think also involved in The Next Generation as well. But anyway, yeah, this one is like, you know, that early 2000s sort of like real gritty, real serious reboot type thing going on yeah. right here, uh, as you can see from the poster. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike, you can pop this up into the chainsaw. Go ahead. Hell yeah. I'll tell you what, Paul. Like I've said, I'm not too versed in all these. But I saw this one in the theater, and I liked it before I'd oh, even wow. seen the original. This is how bad I was about stuff. And I, I saw that in the theater, thought it was pretty effective, you know, and I, I, I thought maybe I should be given a chance to some of these other movies. Wow. Well, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit jealous because um, the, uh, I've only seen one uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie in the theater, and it's mm. not this one. So I'm a little jealous that you had that experience. Well, you should be. And speaking yeah. of jealous, <laughs> why don't we get into... Oops, what did I do? I touched something I shouldn't have, but we'll just deal with it. Yep. We got two babes. There's a lot of stuff sliding around behind the scenes here. We got two babes. Uh, we've got Jessica Beale as Aaron up on the on the left here. And then we've got Erica uh, Learson? Learson? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so, as Pepper. Yes, indeed. Who oh boy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 
I think this kind of speaks for itself if you are someone uh, who is into the whole Texas Chainsaw Babe thing. This is a must must watch for you uh, for several reasons. I mean, just first of all, you know, I think it is actually f- a, a, a very well put together, very scary, very gritty uh, very gory, you know, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Texas Chainsaw movie. I and I know that you know it hits the, hits all the marks for a lot of people who are fans of this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I think there's probably some people out there who this is their favorite of the entire series. Um, yeah, and I, I understand bet. why. You know, it kind of takes the original grittiness of the first film and puts that sort of Hollywood shine on everything, including the uh, the babes and the costumes that they're wearing here. I mean, Jessica Biel, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a fan of Jessica Biel, okay? I mean, I mean how could you not be, honestly? Right. Uh, we reviewed her not too long ago uh, on the podcast in a movie called The Tall Man. You did. That was great uh, she, fun. Yeah, she was very good in that. I think she's very good in this film as well. Her her look in this movie, I think, is also very iconic at this point. You know, you mm-hmm. kind of have the like early two thousands low riding jeans and the and the wife beater top, and then you got the Texas hat there going on. You know, I mean, just absolutely chef's kiss as far as I'm concerned. Matthew McConaughey actually then took this look, and that's what he dresses as now. That's why mm. he was inspired by a later Texas Chainsaw movie that he was in and said, you know what? That's how I'm dressing from now on with the, the straw cowboy hat and the, the undershirt Yeah, and low-rise jeans. He's, always, he's showing off top of that crack, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> little fun fact for you there. <laughs> yeah, totally true. Don't worry. Um, yeah, Jessica Biel obviously is just wowie zowie but Mm -hmm. i wanted to give a shout out here to erica learson as well uh because uh she's great in the film as well and uh you know fans of our podcast may remember her from um book of shadows blair witch 2 she was in that as well that is right i knew that yeah Yeah. so yeah pop pop them both in the bees absolutely hundred percent total babes Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of babes, we got the beginning here, which is where babies are from. Um, I guess. Wow, that's a that was a real good segue. Uh, in 2006's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Beginning. Yeah, this is a prequel to uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake from 2003. So kind of mm-hmm. same lineage as the movie that we were just talking about, and you kind of get to see. You know, kind of an origin story here for the character of Leatherface and sort of like how he turned into the iconic villain that we all know and love. Do you feel the the origin story matches everything? Like how it should? Like, do you think it's a fitting origin? Yeah, I think it's uh, pretty good. I okay. think that this, this uh, particular film is maybe not quite as strong as the... Uh, previous uh, installment that is attached to. Mm -hmm. But I still think that, let me put it this way, if you enjoy the 2003 remake, I think that you'll probably like this film as well. It's the same vibe, same sort of gritty, you know, gory feel to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe it was also produced by Michael Bay. So very similar sort of thing going on here. Okay. Well, Paul, where do you put this bad boy? I am going to rate... Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. I'll, I'll give that an A as well. An A? All right. Yeah. Well, here you go. There we go. And Not a also, bad flick. Also in 2006, we had a little Jordana Brewster. As oh, Chrissy. my goodness. Oh, boy. And sorry, I know that, that the dimensions of that image, Mike, kind of doesn't quite fit with some of the other stuff that we've been doing. But hey. that is kind of the, like, you know, iconic shot from the film right there. Oh, so yeah. I had to go for it. It's understandable. She's hiding under a truck trying yeah. not to get murdered. Yeah. Um, you know, again, mid-2000s vibes here in ter- in terms of the costumes. You got those mm-hmm. low-waist jeans going on. Uh, she's, a, she's a babe, 
you know, from, um, wasn't she in the Fast and Furious movies at some point? That seems right. Yeah, I think she was. And she was also in the uh, the uh, reboot of Dallas from a handful oh, of years later. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. But she is uh, uh, pretty great in this film as mm-hmm. well, kind of like taking up the Jessica Biel mantle, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I will not give anything away, but man, oh man, the ending of this movie, uh, has quite the shock to it. So Mm. mentally prepare yourself for that. Okay. I will. And Paul, let me guess. She's going into the babes category. Indeed. Indeed she is. Oh yeah. Oh man. We're running out of babe space. We'll have to to (laughs) bring them. We'll have to wrap them around a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. All right, then we're going to follow up with just what's called Texas Chainsaw from 2013. Yes, a.k.a. Texas Chainsaw 3D. This came out during the whole 3D Mm. craze, if you remember that. Oh, I miss it, don't you? No. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, they're still kind of doing it, aren't they? I don't know. Not like they did, man. They They were trying to sell 3D TVs and shit. I don't think that's a thing anymore. I don't know. Yeah, Fuck. and this is not the one. I said that I saw one Texas Chainsaw movie in the theater. This is not the one mm. that I did see in the theater. Although there is some stuff in the movie that I I betcha was probably pretty fun in 3D. Yeah, we got you know, that like the chainsaw flying at you and stuff. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, you know what? I actually really enjoyed this film. Um, a lot of people hate on it. A lot of people. Mm will tell you that this is one of the uh, weaker entries in the franchise. I don't know. I liked it for what it was. Um, We talked kind of at the beginning here about whether or not um, Leatherface is a villain or a victim. Mm -hmm. Um, And in this film, he is painted in a much more kind of sympathetic light, Mm -hmm. which I think is part of like the thing that people have trouble with. It's like, no, he needs to be a crazy you know, psycho killer without any reasoning or backstory or anything yeah. like that. Whatever, you know, how, like how dare there be depth to a to a, <laughs> a monster? I guess you know. Yeah, well, I just, I mean, at this point, uh, this came out in what twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. So you know, at this point, you're going to need to do something a little bit different with the mm-hmm. character just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Um. So I. I did enjoy this film, but I have to be honest with you. There is one major, major reason that I I enjoyed this film. I know why you enjoyed this film, Paul. But first, we'll get to that in a second. But where where would you like to put this film on the tier list? You know, I mean, because of the major, major reason, it's Mm got to go in the A column. All right. Let's pop it up to A, baby. Yeah. Not quite a classic, but man, oh, man. I enjoyed watching this. Uh, my head is swimming right now just thinking about it. Yes. Well, Paul, let's get into other parts of this. Uh, one part is... Um, oh. oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh boy. I boy. thought I did this in the other order, but I, I, I didn't. Um, let's just... Be- I mean, that's down. fine. Let's just settle down. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, hold on. We're just gonna. I guess we need to double up on these, actually. Yeah, yeah. We can't... These aren't... These aren't singular a singular situation this is just get all the angles let's just get all the angles here <laughs> just cut our faces off who cares <laughs> this is, paul who is this that is the star of texas chainsaw 3d alexandra daddario mm-hmm. famous from um the i'm not a doctor movies what are the uh are you talking about um, uh, those Eric, Eric Roberts, Roberts movies? Is she in one of those? I don't remember. Is she not? Uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, I know thanks. that uh, yeah, she's famous for a couple different things. She was in um, uh, True Detective. Oh, that's right. Season that's right. one of that. Um, and then she was she's, she did a couple other horror movies called... Um, uh, uh, malignant, I think it was called. Anyway, it doesn't matter. What's important is that she is in Texas Chainsaw 3D, or if you're just watching it at home, Texas Chainsaw. And the first time I saw this movie, Mike, 
tell me. Tell us. I don't. I, honestly, I don't. I had to watch it again because I didn't remember much from the first time <laughs> around because I was so distracted. I didn't really even understand what was happening with the plot or if even there was a leather face in it. <laughs> and, you know. You were just distracted by those big, beautiful eyes and just drawn in. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. Get it. I get it, buddy. The eyes, the everything. And look, I get it. I know that in 2022, it's maybe not the most popular thing to talk about or way to talk about it. But if you're talking about Texas Chainsaw Babes, right here, I'm telling you, Mike, Alexandra Daddario is number one Texas Chainsaw Babe. She takes the cake in the whole franchise. Mm -hmm. Uh, I almost think it was bad casting because I was so distracted I couldn't pay attention. (laughs) Um, And absolutely no offense to any of the other uh, great women who have appeared throughout the different movies. Sure. But Mike, if you would be so kind as to pop Alexandria up into that chainsaw column yeah, i just i sure. have to you know i gotta do it sure i'm gonna i'm just gonna do the one image because we are well i guess we're yeah. not running out of space in the chainsaw zone but you know we don't have to double represent here okay so so we got we got alexandra up there paul we do uh you know obviously beyond the fact that she is just just stupid hot and just like uh, it's not even fair you know that that uh that they put her in this movie and didn't tell me that that was going to happen. <laughs> they didn't warn you. Yeah. No. Cause I, cause I had never seen her in any, anything before, you sure. know? So she, she just shows up and I'm like, what, what? Um, wow. but beyond that, you know, great performance in the film. And she has one of the all time, in my opinion, one of the all time best lines in any Texas chainsaw movie. And mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, if you know, you know, I'll just leave sure. it at that. If you don't know, I think you should watch the movie. Sure. It's, it's a fun one. I've seen this one as well. And it's a, it is, it's a blast. Yeah. Okay, cool. Did we do this one for one of our uh, COVID what, movie nights? What, what, during the, yeah, during the, the height of the lockdown pandemic thing, we were doing some, what we called fuck COVID streaming. And we were right. spending a Friday night, you know, streaming videos. And this was one of them. Yes. It was fun. It was great. Yeah. Now. I don't know if we should even go on with the rest of these movies, Paul, because I don't know if you've even care about what happens well, next. But yeah, I we're mean, gonna, we got to do it. We're going to soldier on. Yeah. We're going to soldier on to the 2017. What is even the title of this movie? There's just seven Leatherface. Lines. It's just Leatherface? Okay. Yeah. Well, Paul, what about Leatherface? Well, I will tell you that this is the one uh, Texas Chainsaw movie that I did see in the theater. Okay. Uh, I was uh, out in Southern California at the time, living out there, and uh, had some time to kill, mm-hmm. and popped into the movie theater by myself. I think there were like two or uh, two or three other people in the theater with me. Not a big turnout for Leatherface. Um, and this is okay. So here's the deal: mm-hmm. this film is attached in terms of like the the di- there's a couple different timelines right okay kind of like the halloween franchise there's a couple different things going on this movie is in the same timeline with texas chainsaw 3d and i should have mentioned this when we were talking about it that film is a direct sequel to the original texas chainsaw massacre oh, okay so every they ignored all of the other canon or all the other history and said we're going to make a direct sequel and then this movie came out after texas chainsaw 3d and this is a prequel to the original film so you have kind of a trilogy Hmm. built out of this film the original film and texas chainsaw 3d if that makes sense okay sure yeah um but all that being said mike (laughs) uh i think you got to pop this into the uh, C category, if mm. you would, please. I will. This is a film that um, had some kind of interesting stuff going on. I, I mean, I didn't hate it by any means, mm-hmm. but I will say that there is a twist at the end that kind of ruined it for me. Mm. Um, and I need—I feel like I need to revisit it. I actually, 
I have it here. I got it, got it at a garage sale for mm-hmm. three bucks. So I do have it on Blu-ray, and I and I do need to uh, revisit it at some point to see if the twist bothers me as much as it did in the theater. But at the time, I'm like, oh, this is going good. This is going good. Oh, that's a weird ending. Yeah. So that's why it's down in the C category. Well, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I know what's not going to be in the C category. And that mm-hmm. is the lovely Vanessa uh, Gr- Grassi? Grassi? Sure. Sorry, Vanessa, if I've mispronounced your last name. Is it She's E on watching, the end? So. Of course she is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um, she was in the film. And, uh, you know, obviously coming off of Texas Chainsaw 3D, it's going to be really hard to fill those shoes. But I think that she did a fine job. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely a babe. As you can see here, she's kind of going through it a little bit. Yeah, this is Um, certainly more obvious that she's not happy with her situation. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, Vanessa. That's that's just the most high quality photo I could find. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But you look like a babe here, so you're going in the B column. All right, baby. Oh, not like that. Man, I'm really good at this. We're we're <laughs> we're close to running out of space, but we're. we're I, think I think we're we'll going to okay. make it. I think we're going to yeah. be all right. We'll just pop you there. All right, now, Paul. That's all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. No. No. Well, as we mentioned at the top of the. Uh, video here there is a brand new one that just came out handful of days ago on netflix oh is it this one there it is the sunflower movie Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh so this one's just called texas chainsaw massacre similar we've already had one called that haven't we well no i mean here's the deal if you want to get very technical about it Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. The do. first film was called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Yeah. In most of the spellings, and I think on the original spelling, um, chainsaw was two words. Wow. Yeah. And then in 2003, you had the remake, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but chainsaw, as in most of the other films, mm-hmm. chainsaw was one word. You can look here. I've, I've expanded the original. And yeah. yeah, that is that is two words. Yeah. So and then of course we had Texas Chainsaw in 2013, mm-hmm. and now this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The only difference is that there's no the in the title. Yeah. <laughs> they got rid of that. Yeah. So well, I'm assuming that ne- the next movie will be called The Texas Chainsaw, um, or just maybe Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but Chainsaw will be two words. I don't know. Maybe it's just going to be called Texas. Uh, Hollywood is like allergic to giving movies uh, subtitles anymore. You got the yeah. new Scream that's just called Scream. You got Halloween from 2018 that's just called Halloween. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Well, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what. You're going to rank this. Yeah. Um, just watched this a couple nights ago again with mm-hmm. friend of the show, Tim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Mike, as you may or may not know, this film right here is causing quite the stir within the horror community on Twitter right now. I've seen some rumbles, and I don't know why, because I have not seen this. Well, there's a handful of different reasons. Again, we're not going to spoil anything here. Um, Mm -hmm. I would just say, check it out on Netflix if you have that, so that you kind of, you know, can form your own opinion about it. Mm -hmm. Um... But I'll try to keep it general here. There's some social commentary in this film, oh. uh, which is fine, except for the fact that they really just beat you over the head with it. This The, oh. the lack of subtlety in this movie is uh, pretty, pretty astonishing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so... It's one of those things, it's actually very similar to um, the situation that happened with the most recent Halloween movie, Halloween Kills, Mm -hmm. where with both films, I I watched them and I'm like, this is bad, but it's so bad, I, it's fun, you know? Okay. Kind of a so bad, it's good situation. Interesting. Um, And it's not boring. I think... 
I think, Mike, you would probably agree that the worst the worst sin that you can commit oh. in a horror film, in any film, really, is just kind of being right down the middle, mediocre, boring. Yep. Absolutely. What do you do? This, this movie, it made its choices. It said, we're doing it. And it just went for it. And for me, it didn't work. For a lot of other people, it worked. You know, a lot of other people are really enjoying this film. Mm -hmm. Um, So I respect, you know, that they kind of just went for it and did their own thing and kind of put a slightly different twist on everything. And again, I should mention that this film, exactly like Texas Chainsaw or Texas Chainsaw 3D, mm-hmm. is a direct sequel to the original film. So this is another timeline now. Another timeline we got. Okay. And if I understand correctly, Netflix is wanting to do more hmm. from this sort of like timeline. So we might get a whole another kind of going down a different rabbit hole with this series right here. Interesting. Which I would be on board on board for because, you know, like I said... This wasn't boring, and people are a lot of people are talking about it. So, as far as I'm mm-hmm. concerned, you know that's an okay thing. Yeah. Um. But where do I put this on the list? That's the question. Where, where does this go? Mm. You know, I'm sorry. I hate to say this. It's my gut feeling is that I can't quite pop it into that A category. Sure. And I'm, we're running out of space for B. Yeah. So uh-huh. probably going to have to go in the C column. Although if I had the choice to put it... Nah, yeah, it's got to go in the C. Sorry, C. sorry, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're, you're a C for me. Well, that's what happens. But... Yeah. Tim, friend of the show, Tim, five stars. Yeah, You'd be putting it, it in the, in the chainsaw. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, So. that being said, Paul... Yeah. We got a little someone named Sarah Yarkin who plays Melody in this 2022 Streck sequel to the original. We do, yes. And uh, she did a fantastic job in this film. Uh, Again, there's been a lot of talk about her character and sort of like the angles that that they take in this movie. I Mm -hmm. won't spoil anything, but she is... I mean, you can kind of tell, Mike, that she has like a very kind of modern look here. Sure. You know, like there's other photos where she's wearing like the high waisted jeans, very different from like the 2000s Texas mm. Chainsaw movies. Um, sure. So, but she's a babe. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Um, I think she did a great job. We're gonna pop her into that B column for babes. Absolutely. Uh, with the caveat that she is not, in my in my opinion. She's not a very likable character. And I think oh. that that's kind of what the movie was intending. So I don't feel too bad saying that. Interesting. But again, this is one of the things that people have been talking about on Twitter. Yeah. Well, she does. I mean, in that production photo or that promotional photo you have there, she looks quite stern in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know I haven't seen it, but, you know, like I said, you know, she kind of has that expression on her face. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I mean, here's the thing. If you're watching the video... Uh, by all means, we are interested in what you guys have to think. So if you disagree with me on any of this stuff, mm-hmm. you feel free to pop a comment down below and uh, let us know what you think about the babes. Mm-hmm. Let us know what you think about the ratings, because here's the thing, Mike, about all these movies. Let me hear it. Um, they are so wildly all over the map in terms of quality and in terms of tone you know, mm-hmm. they just have so many of them have their own different thing going on. It's like, you know, if you watch a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, you kind of know what you're going to get. Sure. With these, it's like there's just All some of over. them are funny. Some of them are like super serious. Some of them are good. Some of them are really bad. Mm-hmm. It's all over the place. And that means that along with that, you get a lot of different opinions where mm-hmm. some people will have, you know, like Texas Chainsaw massacre the next generation like at the bottom of a list some people will have that all the way at the top sure so it's really all over the place and so that's why i want to encourage people to feel free to uh, voice their opinion in the comments below of course and and paul while we have run out of texas chainsaw massacre films 
Mm -hmm. I still have something I as a little treat. I have I would like you to to rank here at the end. I figured you might have a treat for me. You know, I I don't like I don't like leaving anything without just a nice little sweet treat. And that sweet treat is DIY children's leather face costumes. <laughs> <laughs> so not I, what I was not I, was uh, what I was expecting. I've got four little guys here who have all oh, wow. dressed up as Leatherface, and I can make these bigger as you request, Paul, because there are four of them, and I want to make sure you can see everyone. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. But I need these tier ranked, you know, because yeah. they're all they're all special in their own way. <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. Um, uh -huh. Where do you want me to start here? Uh, why don't we start with the one I have highlighted, which is this this little guy. Yeah. You know, he's got the wig, he's got a bloody chainsaw and blood just all over his dang body. And I don't know what's happening with this mask, but it is terrifying. <laughs> it's like marker drawn on and like sewed together. It's it's pretty it's, fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Um, yeah. I love all the blood. You got a pretty authentic looking uh, butcher's apron there mm -hmm. and the chainsaw and everything. He's even got the tie on. Yeah. That's pretty great. Um, I tell you what, like, I, I don't want to, for this, just be the only person do You want to, like, do half and a half here where you you rank sure. two and I rank two? Sure. You you rank this and then I'll rank the next one and we'll pass back and forth. Okay, cool. I think this kid is great. I would pop him into the A column. All right. Let's get him in that A zone. Um, okay, so then I'm going to rank what I have listed here as the second one I downloaded. And so it's this little guy who, man, this also is a terrifying mask. Not as <laughs> wonderfully terrifying, but also in its own way it kind of is. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just... <laughs> Similar chainsaw. Like, I haven't examined these really, so this is, this is, this is genuine excitement for me to see these. I, you know, I need to get this one. I need to get this one out of your face. Um, because yeah. we need, we need to be able to see everyone's reaction. So this, <laughs> this little guy's right here and, you know, it's got the tie and got a butcher's apron. And a cha I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah. Like the, 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 the other, the other one's better. And so because mm. of that, uh, because of that, I'm going to plop him into, I don't want to rate the. Now nah, he's going. He's going in A as well. I would okay. have. I would have put your other one in the chainsaw tier. That's that's what it comes down to for me. I see. Um, but with that context, understand yeah. that that's why he's going there. So then yeah, you, I you mean, get. Oh, sorry. Well, I just I can't rate a child in the same category as the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> I, mean, I just can't do it. I mean, you kind of can. <laughs> All right, you get the one I have marked as number three. And that's, okay. oh, geez, we're losing him. We're losing him. All right, there we go. We got this this little guy who doesn't seem to have a chainsaw. It's, yeah. I, I think it's a a car scraper for a, a, when it's cold out. And we got a blue um, tie, you know, not quite the right color. Well, God damn. Yeah, this is, I mean... What happened here? Like, how are you going to do a Texas Chainsaw Massacre costume without the chainsaw? It's quite I mean, that's frankly an extremely you know? valid question that you've got. And the mask. Let's get a close up of this mask real quick. Kind of looks like a baseball. Yeah. To me. So, I don't know, Paul. How do you feel about this this guy? Uh, I'm sorry. Fuck this kid. F. <laughs> F <-tier. laughs> sorry, you got to have a chainsaw if you're going to do a. <laughs> think the texas ice scraper massacre is good i mean you know if, if he wants to do his own independent <laughs> film and go down that route he's he's free to do that but it's not for me sorry kid okay all right so i about this last kid here this one's up to me well there's a couple things i'm noticing right off the bat one is let's just let's get a better look at this mask uh -huh. It's a pretty gross mask. I feel like that might be a real Halloween costume mask, like a like a like a cheaper one, but it's one I think. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, 
you know, Leatherface does look different throughout the various movies. I mean, he's wearing different masks. Even mm-hmm. in even in the same film, he will put on different masks. So yeah, it's 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 valid to sort of have a different looking mask. I think absolutely. Now, here's the other thing that I think I've noticed, and we're going to do a little investigation here, Paul. Mm-hmm. Look at this apron he's got on. Notice the, 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 the seam lines on it. And it, yeah. it really reminds me of a little other outfit that we saw earlier. <laughs> Let me see if I can figure out which one it is. This one of the sexy outfit. <laughs> I think it's the same apron. Look at I... the lines. It's oh. the same spot on there. Those lines are the same. I oh, think that it, would be interesting. I think someone's parent yeah. went ahead and bought a sexy <laughs> sexy leather face costume and put it on their child. I'm gonna I'm gonna I have a slightly different take on this, Mike. I think that he is actually cosplaying as a grittier version of mm. the sexy costume. Yeah. And and I think there's one third timeline this could have been is where someone, a parent, wore a sexy leather face outfit one Halloween and then the next year or years later gave it to their child, you know, repurposed it in a, in a very, you know, environmentally friendly way. They re- recycle, reduce, reuse, right? So Entirely because of, possible. Because of all that, this little motherfucker is going into that A tier as well. <laughs> I feel so bad now for the kid who got an F. Uh, F, try harder next time. <laughs> it's just not, it's a good outfit. I mean, but it's just not, mm. it's nowhere near. It's a good attempt, but listen, yeah. kid, if you're watching, try harder next time. <laughs> yep. Wow. Well, that, Paul, that's all I got for you. Well, that's great. I mean, I, I appreciate you throwing in those little treats there at the of end. Of course. Uh, and this has been super fun. I appreciate you uh, putting this together. Hey, Paul, thanks for suggesting it. Thanks for watching all of the films. And, and you know, I, I got some catching up to do, it seems. Yeah, I think, you know, you, I mean, who knows if, if all of these would be for you, but you've seen some of them, so you mm-hmm. might as well just go the distance. You may know? as well just fill out the resume there. Yeah. And let me just reiterate that uh, we would love to hear from you guys watching the video mm-hmm. Comment down below. Give us your rankings. You know, give us your order of best to worst Texas Chainsaw mm-hmm. Massacre movies. Let us know what you agree with. Let us know what you disagree with. Absolutely. And we are getting into doing more and more video content, including more of these tier lists. We have other ones where we've done the Blair Witch Universe. Um, the other one we did. Uh, was it? Uh, oh, the Friday the Thirteenth Universe. Friday the 13th, Duh. That was yeah. the first one we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, they're really fun and we're going to do more of these. If there's something you'd like to see, if you want to know what someone thinks about some of this stuff, hit us up in those comments as well. I have to say it cause we're on YouTube, Paul, like, and subscribe. So <laughs> got to do it. Yep. And, and go to bmoviemania.com If you want to check out our podcast, season yep. six is just around the corner. Oh, hell yeah. And it's, it's a lot of fun. We've started recording it and there's some batshit stuff going on. So there's some bangers. Come hang out with us. It's a fun time. Yep. All right. Uh, bye. Bye, Paul. Bring, 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 bring,